there is a therapeutic vaccine that shows promise for curing a range of cancers. Dr. Richard Chafu is here to explain. Dr. Chafu, good morning. Good morning, Charlotte. Oh my goodness, I met somebody just a few weeks ago who is uh, fighting cancer and I wondered in, in that moment, will there be a day that we just don't have conversations like this anymore? That would be wonderful. I mean, I hope, hope that someday, you know, as you and I were talking about earlier on, you know, unfortunately, there are so many types of cancers and we've we've done amazing things in, in the surgical field, in chemotherapy and radiation therapy, and yet, as you said, uh, we're losing a lot of people to cancer, which is a serious problem. And there are so many kinds of cancers. They vary per patient, uh, per cell type, very specific. So this is a, a real challenge for researchers and clinicians. Let's talk a little bit about this vaccine. What is this? What were the results of the clinical trial? So it was a fascinating trial. You know, the initial work, Charlie, was actually on mice studies where they actually were able to develop a vaccine and they gave it to mice that they had actually created cancer, large cancer cells, even in cancers where they had metastasized the lung and these vaccines had eliminated these cancers. And so starting from an animal model, they went to what's called the phase one clinical trial, which is an FDA trial, and they, they developed the vaccines and there were about 11 patients. So it's a very small initial study. The researchers wanted to make sure can we create a vaccine that's not toxic to the human? Right. And they were able to do that. And what they showed is that in half the people where they developed that vaccine, there was a clinical response to the tumor. In one woman who had ovarian cancer, her tumor went completely away for 82 weeks, which wow. is remarkable. And another patient, it went back, reduced uh, what's called a partial response by 50%. And the other patients in the study, the other four people that responded, the tumor did not grow. So this is really the area in the field that researchers are looking at in immunotherapy. You know, we all have our immune system mm -hmm, that goes mm -hmm. and destroys cells all the time that are, that, are, that are rogue or aberrant cells. When they grow out of, out of uh, check or they get too large, of course, that's where cancers come from. So the researchers have developed a vaccine, at least preliminarily, okay. that shows that there can be a response. What, what happens now? Well, what happens is, cancer cells are really smart. They obviously want to survive. And so uh, what happens with the vaccine is it supercharges our immune system to go and attack the cancer cells. However, the cancer cells have a way to sort of uh, stealth, make themselves cloaked, if you will, and, and fool the body into thinking they're normal cells. And so the vaccine in and of itself will probably not be enough. Mm -hmm. There are something called uh, checkpoint inhibitor cells. And this is actually a drug that's being developed that will actually prevent the cancer cells from cloaking themselves against our immune system and then allow the vaccine to work effectively. Oh. So it's a complicated problem. It is complicated and hopefully uh, researchers, doctors, everybody, they find a way to uh, cure so many people. I want to talk about uh, fasting. Fasting, fasting, we've right. talked about this before. I've done this a few times in my life. It's surprising how good one feels when you do it. It is, and, and, and what's fascinating, Charlie, is there was a study that came out recently. They took a group of 100 people and they put them into two groups of 50 each. One group just ate a regular diet, of course, calorie-restricted diet, and the other group, you know, three times a day, the other group were fasting uh, two days out of the week, so a five and a two, five days eating and then two days fasting. At the end of that three-month period, they found that both groups had lost the same amount of weight, but in those that were fasting, they showed they were better able to handle their blood sugar, which is important obviously in diabetes, mm -hmm. and importantly, there was less belly fat, which we know is associated with cardiovascular disease. So there are some implications of some health benefits from this. We've heard the information that you need to eat breakfast, you need to eat three meals a day, four meals a day. So that is not the best thing to do? Well, again, you know, this is just preliminary evidence. Okay. And, and the important thing is obviously, you know, if you're thinking about doing a diet like that, you want to do that under the supervision of your physician, dietitian. But we do know that, you know, when we're eating, there's our blood sugar goes up and that's how our, our good cells and also mm -hmm. our tumor cells respond. When we're not eating food and we're fasting, we're creating what's called ketosis or ketones or the source of energy. Now our cells can, can handle and can metabolize that as an energy source, however cancer cells cannot, interestingly enough. In, in addition, when we're in that ketotic phase, it's almost like we're in a, a state of prolonged exercise. Mm. So we see a reduction in inflammation, we see yes. fewer free radicals, and there are some uh, researchers that seem to think that that might reduce 
uh, certain neurological diseases like Alzheimer's reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, perhaps provide longevity. But as we all know, longevity is due to many factors. You know, That's some of true. it's environmental, some of it's genetic, but definitely some interesting data. Interesting. All right, Dr. Shafu, thank you. Good, Good stuff. See you, sure. Seven forty-seven.